Welcome, ladles and jelly spoons, to something a little different. <clears throat> this is a Civilization 4 Beyond the Sword playthrough. Uh, and I'm going to play the scenario Earth 18 CIVs, which, which will be uh, the world map with 18 other computer players on it. Yeah. So I'm going to play as the English, just because I'm English and I like the spawn. My name's Aegis. I'm going to play Noble, because that's the standard difficulty. And I want to put it on Quick, just because um, it's just faster and I enjoy it more. <laughs> so, quite a few of you actually haven't heard this game, have been asking around. And, um, it's quite old now, I can't remember when it was made, 2007 or something. But what you basically have to do is build a city to begin with you get settlers and workers uh, sorry my brother just interrupted me I'm just um, quickly building a warrior and I'm going to explore upwards in Britain so yeah I start across the ocean from Paris which means that their borders will press against mine is the French civilization? I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm explaining this very well, but this is what Britain looks like on the world map. It's kind of cool. So you get resources. These are the main things of the game. Uh, resources like this is cow, uh, stone, wheat, deer, dye, fish, sheep, sheep. Uh, and the f crabs, what else have we got? And you can. This is the world map so far that I know. Later on, it looks much more impressive. Because it's a really good model of the world map, I think. So I'm just sending my warrior off to explore. Because barbarians can spawn in any area that's dark. Oh, farmers, pray so that your summers I tend to leave. And your winters clear. I tend to leave my warrior up north here stop barbarians from spawning. It's kind of like Minecraft in that respect. But as you can see the detail, the graphics are pretty pristine. So what I've done is, in London I've built a work, uh, a warrior, so that my city could grow. Because when I start to build a worker, any food that's produced from the environment around is automatically placed onto the production of the worker. And that's an important point because uh, these loaves you see here, these pieces of bread, those are pieces of food. I'll go into the city menu. You can see the, the squares that the city is using to collect resources from. This one is three, three pieces of bread and a gold. In the city it's got two pieces of bread, a production, or a hammer, and a piece of gold. Gold can be used to research for espionage or just to increase your gold in your coffers. And you can improve squares to or tiles to make them more effective in giving resources. Shall be the fruit of so cattle, now what I'm doing in my city is is I'm building a worker which will be able to improve the tiles that I'm currently inhabiting. So quickly skip the terms. Research. This is research. By the way. It's a lot to explain in this game. Um, depending on what you research. Oh, there goes my dogs. <laughs> Sorry about this. A bit patchworky. I'm gonna go ahead and build the Stonehenge, just because I'm that cool. Because Stonehenge, basically the wonders, they will increase your culture. I don't know if you can hear this <laughs> maelstrom in the background. It's pretty fun. Uh, and these are other leaders which have their own CIVs. So this worker here has just built a pasture. This pasture, look, now it's increased to four loaves of bread, two production, and a gold. So there's still a gold there, but you've got an extra loaf, of, extra slice of bread, and two more productions, and that will help me to gather more resources build the stone henge faster with the production and 
So I'm going to build the stone henge to push back foes, these borders here. The these are the borders of this of civilization, the French civilization, who are just across. So if they push me this way, I can't use these tiles here. I can select tiles around here, but I can't use any in this area. And I want to be able to use this here to plant, which will give me extra food later on in the game. But Paris, that they're a civilization perk, as it were, allows them to have extra culture so their borders grow faster. So they, they quite often come out dominant if both the English and the French are AI controlled, just because of the border expansion. Um, this number here indicates population in the city. At the moment, London's five stars, as I call it, which means it's got around 500,000 population, I think. That's uh, that's allegedly what the figures mean. I'm not entirely sure. And you can see here the city nationality. And because the French have a little authority over this city because it's so close to their city, it's 11% French, the nationality. This is the culture. Every time this bar fills up, I'll get my borders will expand once more. And I've got plus two culture at the moment. That's just from the palace. Whichever city the palace is, is in, becomes your capital city. So that's why that's got a star there. Later I'll build other cities and it'll just be a circle. That's because it's not that they're not the capital. Hath not the potter power the over the pottery. clay to make one vessel unto honor? The reason it's zoomed out is because it's a built stone henge, and it always does a nice little intro thing here. There you are. They're really nice to watch. So next, I'm going to go ahead and build a settler. And you can see now, if you go into my city demographics, that <clears throat> I've got five happy faces and six sad faces. So, if if there's more sad faces than happy faces, you get sad people. And that means that one person, um, one of these squares will not be able to be used. And these squares are interchangeable for any of these experts. I'm only allowed to use Citizen at the moment, but I'll be able to use different ones later on in the game. So I can put Citizen on there, that gives me an extra production. I'm going to go ahead and remove both of those, and use this layout here. So, one person will not be working. To counter that, I'll have to add units to the city later on in the game. That's pretty much the only way I'll be able to do it. So, I've built a settler now, I'm going to build another worker, and I'm going to put the settler up to the north where Scotland is. And this is, this is my usual tactic when playing doing what to be world map. In writing this is what pretty much what I always read. do. Either that or I go to the Americans, which also have a very good starting point. So I've just researched them too, that will help me to use both. these deer here. Research archery next. I'll go ahead and build a library. Library increases your research in a city. So this this will finish this farm here. So I'm going to go ahead and call this city Edinburgh, just because that's where I think that's yeah that's pretty much where Edinburgh is. And there's fish right next to it. Fish can be harvested using work boats. Which we'll go out to see. So, Louis XIV uh, from the French Empire, he's the leader and he can open this sort of chat menu and it, he's basically saying if you don't give us cow then we're going to be we're not going to be happy with you so I reject your empty, empty threats. <laughs> Die. Later on I'll probably declare war on him. Actually, that's one of the main things I wanted to ask when I started doing this. 
Do you want me to become a military civilization, or do you want me to become a peaceful civilization? There's, there's those two paths you can take. You can build a standing army to attack, a standing army to defend, or just trust everyone around you and don't build one at all, but pretty much uh, not the best way to go. Um, so I'm linking everywhere up with roads. At the roads make your units go faster when they're on them. And they also make trade routes possible between the cities that you're linking together. And if you link it to a resource, it will allow you to use that resource in special production, like stone, which is there. That makes the Stonehenge and the pyramids build twice as fast. Double production speed with stone, other things here. And wonders also have special things that they do. So I'm building the barracks now in London. So I'm just that awesome. Open borders allow you to go inside other people's territory. I usually accept them just because it helps it to keep people happy seamless. with you. For a young man killed in battle. Say, I'm gonna go ahead and build a galley. In his death, all things appear Open borders again with Russia. And now Julius Caesar wants my cap. But I don't think so, mate. Now you can see I've got what is it? Unhealthiness in that city down there in London. Oh, these are random events. Um these happen every now and then. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. You can turn them off if you want to. I just used to keep them on just because it makes it a little bit more interesting. So I can just go and choose buildings that have been destroyed. A powerful hurricane. I don't know if you're able to read that on, on um, YouTube. So one of my buildings will have been destroyed. Let's see what it is. It will come up in this feed, I think. Library. I've lost my library. Okay, so this is a great person. Great persons, PL, great people, great persons of the world. Appear when this bar fills up. Where is it? There it is. Great persons, great people. So they can use be used to research technology, to start a golden age, or to join the city as a worker sort of person. And what he'll do is they'll add two production and two and five gold. So I'm going to use that. And that will help me a lot in the early stages. So I've finished my work boat, plunk that on there. So that Edinburgh is going really fast now. So I rebuild my library because I really like the library. It's pretty much necessary. And I'll send my workers to different resources so they can both go at it. And Edinburgh usually reaches 20 stars about. So does London. They pretty much even out. And you can build another city about here or here. No, not here. Here, if you want to. Or remove this one and use one here and here. But I usually don't like to overcrowd the main place. I usually put another city on island. So, nine stars and four stars. I've got half a million altogether, so I can't have been right before. Be around about 50,000 per star or thereabouts. Maybe it's maybe it's correlated, but not directly. I'm not sure. Maybe a 20 star holds. Right. So now we're such sailing. I can build a galley. Galleys can move on the coastal squares, but not on the external squares or the ocean squares. And this sort of deal keeps helps to keep them he uh, the leaders happy with you. It's got one food and two health in exchange for the one that's the same. So I like to always accept those sort of things. On the open borders. And fur provides happiness, which I'm going to need. What do you need? And so do work so do warriors. Cyrus of Persia. Persia's quite far away. Really. Oh, Isabella's already annoyed with me. You should hammer your iron when it is glowing so. hot. Anyway, I'm approaching my YouTube limit, so 
I'm going to stop rambling now and pack in. So see you guys later in the next.